Welcome back, horror fans, cinephiles, and Jallo enthusiasts. This is Tanner Leeser, your host for all things Jallo, here on The King in Jallo. Our next stop on our journey through Jallo cinema is the second Jallo film from Sergio Martino, The Case of the Scorpion's Tail, released in 1971. This video is an edited down version. Herein, you will find the overview portion of the full length video. Coming next week will be the complete deep dive with the review and Jally Tally. This video may be watched without any spoilers. Here is The Case of the Scorpion's Tale Overview. The Case of the Scorpion's Tale is an Italian and Spanish co production. The film is directed by Sergio Martino. The film's script is written by Ernesto Gastaldi along with Eduardo Manzanos Brocero and Sauro Scavolini. The musical score is composed by Bruno Nicolai. The cast comprises George Hilton as Peter Lynch, Anita Strindberg as Cleo Dupont, Alberto de Mendoza as John Stanley, Ida Galli, billed as Evelyn Stewart, as Lisa Baumer, Jeanine Renault as Lara Florakis, Luigi Pestili as Inspector Stavros, and Tom Feligi as Mr. Brenton. The plot follows Lisa Baumer, whose husband recently died in a plane crash, not before he had taken out a very hefty life insurance policy, which prompts her to go to Greece to collect the money. Once there, she is tormented by various people who all seem hellbent on getting their hands on her new money. Peter Lynch is assigned to this suspicious case and must ascertain whether the insurance claim is legitimate or fraudulent, but the more he investigates, the deeper he becomes embroiled in the same dangerous conspiracy which is leaving behind a trail of vicious killings. Welcome back, Sergio Martino. So let's be real here. This Jallo is good, but not quite as great as his first one, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, released earlier this same year, 1971. Sure, this is all subjective, but Scorpion's Tale has a few glaring flaws, mainly the plot sidetracks, which seem to have been done to show off the scenic filming locations found in and around England and Greece, which, to be fair, is a common trap of Jello films, utilizing this jet set sub subgenre, because if you paid to be there, you might as well show it off. In defense of the film, the conclusion is very satisfying, and the murder set pieces are very entertaining and memorable. In fact, they are the things I remember most when thinking about this movie. So why did Martino go for the jet set giallo trend? Because this was a thing producers were trying to do around this time, hide the Italian identity of the film in hopes of it gaining wider exposure, especially among Western audiences set the film anywhere except in Italy. Perhaps this trick would have worked better if the cast and crews weren't filled with obvious Italian names. Later in the 1970s though, this trend would mostly be dropped, but even going into the 1980s, there would be a few exceptions. For example, The New York Ripper in 1982 by Lucio Fulci, which I argue is because it was trying to sneak in line with the abundance of US slasher films that were saturating the market at this time. The maestro Ernesto Gastaldi returns to pen yet another giallo, and like all of his scripts up to this point, it is competently handled and is satisfying in its conclusion. Speaking to the pacing, which feels a little off, and the scenes which just pad out the running time, Sergio Martino admitted that an early print of the film ran a little short, and this explains why new scenes were included which added minutes, but upset the pacing with scenes that felt tangential and non sequiturish. The character we are following, or characters, shifts so frequently that it makes it more challenging for most of the audience to engage with any of the main cast. Not impossible but it certainly works against the film. Despite some incredibly dramatic intense sequences in the film, the character development isn't equally great for our main trio, and the focus does shift from one character to another and then another. 
Martino is certainly a skilled director, and his talent shines brightest during the gory yet stylistic murder scenes, but the police investigative scenes tend to drag, and the romance plot seems a bit forced and not entirely convincing. The film does really pick up steam in the final act, which does make up for the slower scenes beforehand. Like I've said, audiences will forgive a slow movie for a great ending, but not so often the other way around. The music is engaging throughout and helps to carry a sense of consistency from the beginning to the finale. George Hilton returns to Jallo stardom, making his first appearance as the neighbor who was a painter in The Sweet Body of Deborah, 1968. From then until the case of The Scorpion's Tale, Hilton would make numerous Jallo appearances and would often be typecast as the playboy, but would prove to be adept enough to play either the heroic playboy or the villainous one. Hilton's performance here is certainly working harder than the character as he appears on the page. Anita Strindberg returns as well, although her role in A Lizard in a Woman's Skin, 1971 by Lucio Fulci was her first Jallo appearance, she was uncredited, and so on paper, this is her first Jallo role. She has the difficult task of showing up nearer to the end of the story and having to win over the audience's sympathies. She does her job well, but most would agree that she nails this better in Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, 1972 by Sergio Martino. She was born in 1943 in Sweden and was in a few Swedish films billed as Anita Edberg, but was dormant from films in the 1960s. In 1971, she began appearing in Italian pictures, beginning with the aforementioned Lizard. She would go on to appear in numerous other jally, such as one of my favorites in the genre, Who Saw Her Die, 1972 by Aldo Lado, as well as Murder Obsession, 1981. She would eventually get married and walk away from films in favor of donning a more domestic role and having a home life with her family. Other Jallo veterans in the cast include Janine Renaud from Run Psycho Run, 1968, Luigi Pistilli from The Sweet Body of Deborah, also 1968, and one of my faves, Alberto de Mendoza, seen in Perversion Story, 1969. And one of the crazier cameos is played by Fulvio Mingozzi, seen last in The Black Belly of the Tarantula, 1971, who in this film appears in photographs as the dead husband. Quite the cameo. Sergio Martino, brother of producer Luciano Martino, was born in 1938 in Rome. He entered films in the 1960s as an assistant director and worked with Mario Bava on The Whip and the Body, 1963, which was co-produced by Luciano. He got his directorial debut in 1969 with two documentaries of the Mondo style, Wages of Sin and Naked and Violent. The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, released this same year, was his first Jallo film, and he would remain in this genre up until the 1990s. But Martino would also dabble in other genres, or filone, including 2019, After the Fall of New York, 1983, a dystopian sci-fi, The Violent Professionals, 1975, a polizia teschi, Menaha, a man called Blade, 1977, a spaghetti western, Island of the Fisherman, 1979, a horror film, plus many, many more. Martino would be affected by the downfall of the Italian film industry in the 1980s and would move into television. He has remained active, but his last work was in 2012. Thank you for watching this overview only video. Don't miss the full overview, review, and jally tally for The Case of the Scorpion's Tale next week. As of right now, you can find the movie streaming for free on Tubi. And if you don't mind spending a few bucks, you can rent it on Apple TV, Google Play Movies, and Amazon Prime Video. Don't forget to like this video and join me next week to see the rest of this review. Comment your predictions for the AZ score for the movie and the final Jally Tally score. Check out the King and Jallo Patreon. New price tiers are up. We have $3 for early access and the viewings. That is over 20 full movie viewings and early access to the YouTube content over a month before the videos go live. The $5 tier has all the Patreon exclusive content. The King and Jallo podcast, the Jallo adjacent podcast, the Rat Hole Burn reviews, the Jallo Reads book reviews, plus many more. 
Thank you very much for your continued support. This is Tanner Leeser for The King and Jallo, and if nothing else, I'll see you next time. Ti piace? Che c'è? Manca un po' di paprika.